Today on Tiki Boy Weekly, I tear down an optical drive to show you the inside and explain to you how every single piece of it actually works. Steve Smith, this is Tiki Way Weekly, and of course, if you ever have any questions, comments, suggestions, and PC horror stories, you can always email me at ask at tikiwayweekly.com, go to my website, tikiwayweekly.com, and either leave a comment to this specific episode, or use the contact form to get in contact with me directly, and you can always comment on this page on many of the websites I post to, like YouTube and blip.tv. This episode of Take Your Way Weekly is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet and the way it should be, anonymously and without oversight. For 20% off your brand new ProXPN account, all you need to do is go to ProXPN.com slash podcast and use the coupon code T-Q-A-W-E-E. That helps out the show a lot. So today's, so today's topic is all about the optical drive. Why? A few reasons. One, it died, and two, it's its turn to be dismantled on this show anyway. Last time I did on hard drives, I actually opened it up and showed you how each of the pieces work. A lot of you actually like that kind of stuff, so I decided I was going to do a different drive before it becomes legacy hardware. So a few details before we actually start examining the insides of the optical drives. So for one, an optical drive has to be a drive that can either read laser discs, compact discs, digital video discs. Blu-ray discs, UMDs, and of course, mini discs. It can contain music, data, even video for an alternate amount of time, depending on how much space. Your CDs can have 640 or 700 megs, depending on how much you're willing to spend. DVDs can have 4.7 gigabytes of space or more, like nine gigs. And of course, if you're looking at Blu-rays, it can either be in 25 gigs, single layer, 50 gigs, dual layer, or 100 gigs for triple layer Blu-ray discs. Most people don't think about this, but DVDs, CDs do not operate in the same formats as the rest of Windows. They have their own format known as Joliet. Joliet, or ISO, 9660 is a special format for optical media that is either CD or DVD that allows all the computers to actually be able to read what's on a disc, irregardless of whether it is Mac, Windows, or Linux. And of course, since Blu-rays don't necessarily use the same laser, they needed their own architecture to be read. Blu-ray discs actually use the universal disc format UDF 2.5, also known as ISO 13346. Don't know what ISO means? It's the International Standards Organization, the body responsible for actually putting out the rules on how any of these formats are actually laid out. Now, how do optical drives work? The part of the show you actually want to see. So, First, we gotta remember, you've got three different types of optical drives. You've got your over the top that has a spring and a latch. You press the button and it opens up. Doesn't require any rotors to open that door, only the rotors and the servos inside to actually turn the disc and read the disc are required. You got your slot kinds, which many people with PS3 will actually know about, and even laptops. Those require rotors to push and pull on the discs inside a computer. And then, of course, we've got these ones that have a tray that has a single rotor that pushes on gears that allows it to go in and out. Fun fact, if you don't have any power on this or your computer is closed, you can't get this one open. And this is why. So looking at the top, we've got the drive servo, the one that allows the disc to spin. And the laser, which can move freely. Thing is, is normally when the door's closed, they're above the tray line supporting the disc already. If you tried to open a disc drive with them above, you would break the drive. Now to get the drive open, you had to use a paper clip or a special tool specifically designed for it to press on a small latch that simultaneously, let's get this up higher. So 
simultaneously drops the laser and drive, drive rotor, and gets the door open. Then you can actually just pull and drive and get your disc out. Now to explain the various aspects of the optical media drive. So we now know that this is the rotor that allows it to spin. But what most people don't know is this, the earliest models of the optical drive had a variable speed motor, which is something that hard drives did not have. Reason they did that is because they wanted the same speed of the same amount of bit rate coming from the inside of the disc and the outside of the disc so that the disc actually spins slower at that time the closer it got to the middle rotor that allows for a constant bit rate during streaming of music now when they finally got rid of that and inserted the buffer they were allowed to keep that rotor spinning at the same speed now what also happens is that's not the only rotor in here you've got a drive rotor that allows the laser itself to move back hold on do you see that back and forth that drive rotor is underneath has grooves in it that allows it to actually follow the tracks on the disc but since discs are invariable imperfect they are not flat the tracks are not exactly burned where they're supposed to be they inserted other technology in here to allow the drive to actually read the media the laser itself is capable of focusing by going in and out it can go up hold on up and down to actually capture the track of interest therefore if the disc were to move or the track wasn't burnt or printed or pressed correctly it would be capable of correcting it on the fly and actually getting the correct data when it's supposed to be Therefore, this drive actually knew on which track it was actually on. All of this controlled by a controller PCB printed circuit board on the back. Not that much technology in it, but it allows the computer, the interface anyway, to actually figure out where on a disc it is, what track it's on, how to focus on the disc, and all of this in near real time. You can barely notice that the laser itself combined with the spinning rotor and the drive that allows it to go in and out and move across the disc actually allows this to actually work. It just works. That's the way it is. Now, it's not a very complicated piece of technology. In fact, it is very hard to understand why you would pay a lot of money for very, very many different types of drives like this, except for a few details that most people won't be able to tell you. First, CDs and DVDs are the only ones that have one laser. Blu-ray drives require two distinct lasers to be backwards compatible. So a backwards compatible Blu-ray player has this normal red laser and in the position right beside, it would have a blue-violet colored laser that allows it to read Blu-ray media or write Blu-ray blu-ray media as well for the last part of my show what do i think is going to happen to the optical drive that's basically what do i think is going to happen in the near future and in the far future well first of all what do you think happens to one of these drives when the optical disc breaks it happens the inside's made of plastic pcbs are basically cardboard most of that cabling wouldn't survive. And even the outside chassis is normally a cheap aluminum. So spinning fast enough, the optical media could actually cause quite a bit of damage. Now this is a big one. Most mobile devices have a very tiny little thin one, not necessarily as well built or well armored. So if we're gonna continue having mobile devices being dropped all over the place, tumbled around, eventually that kind of optical media will trip or crack and it will cause that kind of damage inside. Only in this case, instead of taking out a drive, it will take out the entire device. Also, it's very cumbersome to be carrying around CDs, DVDs, and even if you have 100 gig Blu-ray discs, 
what's the point when you can have terabyte USB 3 drives that operate at a faster speed and do not require the same amount of power? To drive the motors in your computer, you need 12 volts of power on all of these actual specific motors. If you don't have those motors inside your computer, you can operate at a lower voltage the entire computer by removing that one device and moving the hard drive that spins to an SSD, you actually allow for the longevity of the battery. So that is another reason why the DVD is gonna go out the window. It is cumbersome, it can crack, and it can be damaged, and it requires way too much power. And as far as it is, as we can see, there is no point having these kinds of drives anymore. We're gonna be moving to the cloud, we're gonna have bigger and bigger SSDs, and that will allow us to actually be completely mobile. No more of this optical drive media to rip in the future. Now, this episode is brought to you by ProXPN. They're the ones who make it possible for me to actually take apart hardware and talk about things related to technology and even answer your questions. So a small word from them that will actually better your security around you so that you can actually go around the world in a safer environment. This is something that they bring to you that I use, that I believe in. So just listen for a few minutes and then I'll get to the end of the show. So now more than ever, your online freedom and privacy are under threat. Governments and ISPs want to control what you can or cannot see while keeping a record of everything you do. Plus that free Wi-Fi at the coffee house or airport terminal is putting you at risk because your passwords and sensitive data can be intercepted more easily than you might think. If you don't believe me, watch the last Security Now episode about all the different technologies the NSA have at their disposal and that was just the list. ProXPN is a global VPN virtual private network that works with almost any internet connection, works with, creates a secure encrypted tunnel through which all your online data passes back and forth. Any online application can work with ProXPN, including your web browser, email, file sharing, and instant messaging programs. ProXPN keeps everything you do online hidden from prying eyes, disguising your physical location, and giving you unfeathered access to any website or online service, no matter where you live or travel to. Complete online privacy with 2048-bit encryption and 512-bit encrypted tunnel. Works with OpenVPN or PPTP. Protect yourself against your ISP six strex rule that is more specifically geared to those American audience. Bypass internet filtering, blocked websites, geographical restrictions for internet content and online video worldwide servers in Asia with worldwide servers in Asia the US, UK, Asia, and more, and has software for Windows and Mac, offering advanced controls, allowing you to select the programs and ports you want to anonymously root through ProXPN servers. ProXPN also works with your iOS or Android device, allowing you to use your data plan or public corporate Wi-Fi with complete and total privacy on the go. No app required. There are apps though for iOS and for Android, and they have an amazing 24 seven customer support. So all you need to do to support this show and to benefit from a great program is to go to proxpn.com slash podcast for more information and to sign up. And yes, they have a free version, but for those of you that like to have faster speeds or torrents, TQA weekly watchers and listeners also get a free 30 day risk free trial, full refund after set before the seven day limits, by the way. All you need to do for that is to visit proxpn.com slash podcast and sign up with the coupon code TQAWEE. ProXPN premium accounts are only $9.95 a month or $74.95 for the entire year. We've got a special offer for you. If you use my code TQAWEE, you receive 20% off the entire lifetime of your accounts and you get to actually surf the internet more securely and without having people spying on your internet connection, whether you be in a cafe, inside a restaurant, or even in any place like an airport with free Wi-Fi. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Don't be afraid to suggest other devices I should tear into to show you the insides of. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day. Goodbye.